scriptures today. Uh, one comes from Exodus. Uh, we've been doing this Ten Commandments series, and so this is the next commandment. It's Exodus 20, um, uh, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. And the second scripture is from Matthew, the 15th chapter. I'm going to do verses 3 to 9. He answered them, Why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and your mother. And whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that whoever tells father or mother, Whatever support you might have had from me is given to God, then that person need not honor the Father. So for the sake of your tradition, you make the voice, the vo make void the word of God. You hypocrites. Isaiah prophesied rightly about you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. As we uh, continue the uh, Ten Commandment series, we're going to talk about the uh, commandment to honor mother and father. Um, it's a commandment that seems to be very simple, and it's the only commandment that has to deal with humans relating to humans with thou shalt not, is, is not in the front. So, we started with the first four commandments, and they were about honoring God, and worshiping God, and having no idols before God. And then there's this bridge to humanity, and this is where we begin to interact with other human beings in the Ten Commandments. And this first one is the only one that isn't set in a negative, it's just said to honor your father, and your mother. So, there's a lot of different ways we can go at this. I've chosen three ways to go at it today. Um, I, I want to talk about, about young people who have parents. I want to talk about um, maybe those who have parents who aren't necessarily as uh, good. And I want to talk about um, I want to talk about parents as they age and dealing with those who are elderly. So first, I want to talk about teenagers, young people. How is it that we are supposed to navigate through this difficult transition from child to adult? It's hard. I'm in the midst of it right now, and I remember as a teenager that I was so frustrated with my parents because they didn't understand me. And now I find myself very frustrated with my teenagers because they don't understand me. And so I think I'm in the same place, just a different position, because I know my teenagers are frustrated with me at times because they think I don't understand. So there's this idea that a parent's job is to care for their child, to keep them safe, to keep them fed, to teach them right from wrong, to help them to make decisions as they go through life. As my children have transitioned from being children to being adults, it's difficult sometimes to know when you're supposed to lay back and not say anything, and when you're supposed to help, when you're supposed to protect, when you're supposed to suggest or tell somebody what to do. And I know there's frustration on the part of my children because I had that same frustration when I was a child, when I was a teenager, when I was a young adult. And so there's this whole time in life, from 10 or 11 until a person is completely on their own, when there seems 
to be this battle that occurs between parents and children. Children want to be independent. They want to learn to live on their own. They want to make their own decisions. And parents, our job is to protect, to keep safe, to do whatever we can to make sure our children have the best life that they can. And it's hard to know where that line is. Where do you let your child fall short? Where do you let your child deal with the pain of the outside world? But it's also difficult for children in that they want to be independent. They want to be on their own. But yet they don't have the perspective of the years that adults have. And I think in this section of honor your mother and father, that's really what I'm talking about, is give the respect to those who have the experience that allows them to see things differently than you. Now, it doesn't say like your mother and father, it says honor your mother and and I understand because there were times in my life where I did not like my parents because I felt the decisions that they were making were the wrong decisions for me. But looking back now as an adult, I could see clearly that they were trying to protect me and help me to make the right decisions. Now, is anybody perfect? No. Am I a perfect parent? Far from it. Were my parents perfect? No. But I know they loved me, and they cared for me, and they wanted the best for me. And I see that now. And I hope someday that my teenage children will see that. That they will respect and honor the fact that I was indeed trying to do the best I could for them. It's difficult. It's difficult as a teenager or as a child to honor your mother or your father at times. So I come up with a list of things, four things that you can do to let your parents know that you honor them. The first thing you can do is say thank you every once in a while. Thank you goes a long ways. The second thing you can say is I love you. Now, there are times at which people have disagreements, especially in family. But if there's the idea that love is always behind everything, that things can be worked out. So if you say to mom and dad, I love you, that doesn't mean you get to continue to argue, but it does mean that you're letting them know that yes, I disagree with you here, but I still love you. You matter. Oh, this is a hard one for teenagers to say to your parents. You matter, mom and dad. It would have been difficult for me to say that to my mom and dad. I didn't say it to my parents until I had a child of my own. In fact, I really didn't say thank you to my dad and how important he was in my life until my son turned 13. When my son David turned 13, I called my father and I said, thank you. And he said, for what? And I said, for letting me live. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, David's 13. He said, oh, I know what you're talking about. It's that whole idea of the patience that my parents had as they dealt with me. And then the last thing, and this is going to be hard for you young people, maybe not harder as you get older, but Say to your parents, I want to spend time with you. One of the problems that occurs in families is that the older kids get, the busier they get, and the further away that they are. And when you have that opportunity, spend some time with your parents. Spending time with those 
who you love. So, tell them thank you. Say I love you. Remind them that they matter to you and spend time together. This doesn't necessarily answer the elephant that's in the room. Honor your mother and father is one of those things that is easy to say. But what do you do with people who live in homes where children are abused or molested or neglected or starved? Are you saying, Pastor, that people who are in abusive relationships are forced to honor their mother and father? Are you saying, Pastor, that a child who is sexually assaulted is supposed to honor their parent who is sexually assaulting them? And my response, of course, is no. When the Ten Commandments were written, there's this idea that one thing can't cover everyone. And that if children are in abusive situations that their parents are part of, we need to protect children. And we need to teach children that it's all right to report, to get help, and to change the situation. And for those who have lived with abusive parents, whether they be alcoholic, whether they be abusive verbally or physically or sexually, there's that whole idea of, I don't want to have anything to do with my parent. I don't want to know anything about that person. And that's what I'm going to say to you, that you need to be in prayer for yourself and for your parent. If you're young and you're in an abusive situation, you need to get help. Seek help from whomever will hear you. And if the first person doesn't believe you, keep saying it until somebody does. If you're an adult now and you had an abusive parent, I want to say to you that maybe you need to seek some professional help. But you also need to be in prayer. Prayer first for yourself. Lord, give me the strength to put what is in the past behind me. And the second prayer is even harder. It's a prayer of forgiveness. To pray for the person who abused you. To pray that God would be in their life and that they would realize the abuse that they have done to you. Pray for them. Pray for their forgiveness and salvation. As difficult as it is. Sometimes, God can do miraculous things. And I'm not saying that you'll ever have a good relationship with a parent. But if that parent will have love in their lives, the love of God, how much better will their life be? And the third thing I want to talk to you about today is those amongst us who are senior. Those amongst us who are older, who need our care. I'm not talking about people who can take care of themselves. I'm talking about people who need our help. Elders among us who need assistance. You see, this was written at a time when there wasn't a nursing home. There wasn't Medicare or Medicaid. There wasn't Social Security retirement. This was written in a time when families stacked one atop the other, generation after generation, living in the same households. It wasn't that long ago that even here in the United States that there weren't nursing homes. Now, there were poor houses, 
for people who were alone and destitute. But those were usually miserable places and led to some of the reforms that we have today. But even those who are on Social Security and Medicare, even those people, if that's all that they have, it doesn't lead to a very good existence. One of the things that happens here at church, or well, before all of this craziness occurred, what happened here on a monthly basis was just a simple lunch, the Dish It Out Cafe. People would come and have lunch at the church. People who were more senior, maybe retired, I'm not using the word old, but they would come to church and they would have a meal and then they would take a meal and deliver it to those in our community who had need, who were retired as well. That connection with people. Going and seeing them. I think we can use the same four things. One of the things that I do at church is go and visit people who are in assisted living or in nursing homes. And really, most of the people who are in those places just need somebody that they can share with, to listen to their story, to hear who they are. It's amazing. Uh, in the church that I served before here, we did a worship service a couple of times a month in different nursing homes around the county. We did three different nursing homes. We did uh, two services on one Sunday, and then two weeks later, we would do one service at the other nursing home. And it was amazing the appreciation that those people had because we made an effort to come in and to worship with them and to be with them and to listen to them, and to help them to remember times gone by, singing old hymns and enjoying one another. My father-in-law recently moved into the community, into assisted living, and one of the things that I was doing every week was going and spending just an hour with him every week. We would sit down and we would have conversation. It was a time when everybody in his assisted living complex was gathering together, but most of the time we sit by ourselves and Ted and I talk. And I just listen. And he tells me stories. Even though his memory might not be that good anymore, he loves to tell stories of the time that he remembers. And so I just sit and listen. I tell him, thank you for all that you've done. I let him know that I care for him. I say, I love you. I tell him that he matters. That he's important. And I spend time with him. Remember those four things that I mentioned to the young people? Those same four things apply to us as we go and make contact. Now, some of you may be to the point in your life where you don't have a mom and a dad to go and see anymore, or don't have an aunt or an uncle or a great aunt or a great uncle to spend time with anymore and to listen to those stories. But I want to say to you that there is a significant number of people in buildings in this county who are without children or without a spouse or without children who live close, people who find themselves alone. Maybe it's time to adopt somebody. Maybe a neighbor that you knew or a friend of the family and go and listen to their stories. Of course, right now, you can't go and do that. But eventually, we're going to get to a point in our society where we can get back out and get together. 
And I want to encourage you that if you're going to, we're going to see somebody, that you get back to seeing them. And that if you feel called to go and listen to stories about days gone by, that you look for somebody. The scripture says today, honor your father and your mother. So that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. It's not some miraculous thing that happens. You're not going to have long life because of this. I don't want to say that. But the hope is that if you take the time to honor those among us who are our mother, mothers and fathers, our grandparents, our aunts and uncles, those among us who were neighbors and friends, that you would stop and listen to them, that I believe God will bless you. And maybe the blessing that you'll receive is that when you find yourself in that situation, in assisted living or in a nursing home, that maybe somebody will come and honor God by honoring you. I hope this has inspired you and has made you think about all the different things that you could do to say, I love you, to say, thank you, to tell somebody that they matter, and to spend time with somebody that you love. Go out this day and honor your mother and your father. Will you pray with me? God, of grace and mercy, we give thanks that you have put within our hearts the desire to honor those that we love. The Lord, place in front of us those who need your love. And give us the wisdom and courage to share that love with them. In Jesus' name, amen.